Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Yay. Last day of e-learning for a little bit, and you get to enjoy your spring break after today. So get your work done and then go outside, enjoy some time in the sun. You have definitely, definitely earned it. Um, I know that a few of you will comment on my new video location. Um, there was a spider in my office this morning, so I will no longer be filming in there literally ever. So new video location for you. All right, so your last lesson before spring break is lesson seven four, and that's just about division properties with exponents. So we're just going to be finishing up hammering through some more exponent expressions. You guys have done a really, really good job with it this week, especially without me in person. If you think back to a few weeks ago when we did that long activity together in class and it took us like forever and we really struggled, you guys have come such a long way. So I am very proud of you guys. In this video, we are going to do a mini lesson for lesson seven four. We're going to go over the two problem solving um, questions and I'm going to kind of walk you through the solutions and I'm going to give you the assignment directions. It is over here on Schoology. Um, we've done something like this in person before, but we've never done it electronically. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand the assignment. And if you have questions, you can just message me and ask me. All right. So if you want to grab pencil and paper, especially maybe your notebook, that'd be helpful. But let's go ahead and jump in. All right, property number one, we are looking at division of terms that have the same base but different exponents. So notice same base A and A, same base four and four. When you've got the division of the same bases, we subtract the exponents and hopefully this looks familiar to you. So if you have like A to the M over A to the N, we can just subtract this and that's gonna help us simplify. Looking at it with actual numbers, if you've got two to the six over two squared, six minus two gives you four, so two to the fourth is your um, expression simplified. Here, this is gonna be important for us, especially when we get into our more complex expressions. Even though it's four over seven and we have to do four minus seven, which gives us a negative exponent, that is okay because we know how to simplify negative exponents. When we see that we've got x to the negative three power, we just write it as one over x to the third and then it becomes positive. So don't be alarmed if you get a negative exponent because you guys know how to simplify those. All right, let's keep going. I am going to show you two strategies today for when you are simplifying expressions that have terms on the top and the bottom of the fraction in your numerator and your denominator. Um, it is important that you see both of them because you might use one for one problem and then the other one for a different problem. So I, even as a teacher, would use different strategies for different solving processes. So take a look at both of them and see which one works better for you. All right, you've got k to the sixth, j to the second over k j to the fifth. So this property really works with your internal dialogue saying, all right, in my numerator, do I have more k's or do I have more in my denominator? And do I have more j's in my numerator or more j's in my denominator? So this is telling you, all right, because I've got six here and one here, I can get rid of the one in my denominator and then just take it away and that would become a five because six minus one is five. For my j's, I've got two here, five here. Because I have more in my denominator, we're gonna keep that variable down there, and then five minus two is three. Now, that works just fine when you've got just a few terms in your expression, but when you have a lot of them, it might not work. So here's strategy number two. Now, this looks a little bit messy and a little bit tedious, but I will tell you, it will keep you very precise in your simplification process. So right now, I see I've got A and A. Because they're on the top and bottom and we're using division, I know I can subtract my exponents. So negative three minus five here, and then for B, I know I'm gonna have seven minus two. Then you can just simplify what is negative three minus five, and you would tell me negative eight, and seven minus two is five. You are not done that. Um, you still have one more step, and we kind of talked about this on the last slide. If you have a negative eight, you're not done simplifying until we have all positive exponents. So to turn that negative eight positive, you're just gonna send it down to the denominator and then your final expression would be b to the fifth over a to the eighth, and then you're done. All right, moving on to property number two. Now you're looking at a fraction inside of parentheses with an exponent on the outside. I always think about this in my head as distributing this exponent to both pieces so that your numerator and your denominator get it. So it would be a to the m power over b to the m power. So if I was showing you a few more examples, it would look like this. 
if you had three fifths to the third power, it'd be three to the third over five to the third. And then you can individually simplify your numerator and denominator. If you had a over b to the one half power, it'd be a to the one half power, b to the one half power. So you're just making sure that every single piece inside of those parentheses gets the exponent. So now let's look at two examples together. Calm down. I know if I showed this to you guys in person, you'd be like, oh my God, like this is too much, but it's really not. If you go step by step, you are okay. The first thing that I want to show you, and you're going to definitely need this for your assignment today. If you've got 12 over 4, remember that that's division. What is 12 divided by 4? And hopefully you're telling me 3 in your head. So you don't have 12 over 4 anymore. You now have just 3 over 1, which is just 3. Then because I've got A and A and B and B and C and C, remember, we're just going to keep our base and subtract our exponents. So you're going to have negative 1 minus 5. For B, you're going to have 6 minus a negative 1. And then for C, you're going to have negative 3 take away 5. Now just go through and simplify your subtraction, and you'd get negative 6. You'd get 7 because minus a negative turns positive, And then you'd have negative 8. Then you need to say, all right, am I done? And hopefully you're going to say no because you've got a negative exponent, negative exponent. To make those positive, send them to your denominator. Your final expression will look like this. 3b to the 7th, those just stay on top. You just squish them together with multiplication. And then a to the 6th, c to the 8th. You're also good in this regard because your variables are in alphabetical order. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is just like property number 2. So because you have an exponent of 5, Watch what I do because this is a quick mistake that come, some kids will make. You need to make sure that the 2 gets the 5 and the x gets the 5. That the 3 gets the exponent of 5 and the y gets the exponent of 5. Kids are always so quick to just be like, oh, it's just for the x and the y. No, your coefficients need it as well. So here's what it looks like when you simplify. If you actually write this out every time too, it'll really help you. Then you just need to use your calculator and just say, all right, what is 2 to the 5th power? And then what is 3 to the 5th power? And then here's what you get. Now, sometimes you would be able to simplify this fraction. Like if you had 5 over 10, you could simplify that to 1 over 2. And you don't even need your 1 because that's a coefficient. Um, so keep that in mind that you could simplify your coefficients if possible, but it might not be. Okay, now take a look at this last little snippet of information I have for you. I don't think this will come into play for you, but I just want to make sure that you're aware. Let's say that you're looking at this expression here and you're asked to simplify it. Notice right away that it's all taken to the negative 3 power. When you multiply that negative 3 by everything inside, everything's going to become negative and you're going to have to flip your pieces right away. So what you can do to alleviate yourself from all of that work when you see that you've got an exponent of negative 3, you can just right away flip your numerator and denominator, and then it's going to become a positive 3. Because you already took the reciprocal, you already flipped it top and bottom, then you can make it positive. Let me show you another like really easy example for it to help you understand. Like if you had 2 thirds to the negative 2 power, Instead of distributing a negative 2 to each piece, you can just take the reciprocal of the fraction and then it'll just be a positive 2 because you were going to have to flip it anyway, so this just saves you some work. So just an extra little snippet of information again. I don't know if you'll see it today in your lesson, but just in case. All right, on to problem solving number 4. Okay, so let's look at the first question. You are comparing two companies and electricity costs, um, and we're really, really looking at unit rate. And it asks you to do two main things. So let's take it step by step. For the first question, it asks you to find the unit rate of each company. Now, for company M, it tells you the unit rate right away, 0 0.15. So that means it's 15 cents per hour. That's your unit rate. That's your constant rate of change. You already solved for that one. For company P, though, we have to find the unit rate, which means that we need to find the number of dollars per hour. To do that, we just have to divide. So you can do 150 divided by 1250, which gives you 0 0.12. Now, in the context of the problem, that means that it's 12 cents per hour. So right now, you know that company M is more expensive because it's 15 cents per hour. Company B is cheaper, it's less expensive because it's 12 cents per hour. So that's part one. 
part two, asks you to find the total cost if we used 2,375 kilowatt hours of electricity from the least expensive company. So least expensive means cheaper, so the one that was 12 cents. So if I was writing out just a very basic equation, it'd be y equals 12 hundredths x, because this is your unit rate, x represents the number of hours of electricity that we use. So plug in 2,375, and your total cost is going to be $285. So that was for question one. Take a look back at your work. Take a look back at the feedback um, just to help you out a little bit. Okay, question two. Some of you guys really, really overthought this one, and it wasn't as hard as you thought it was. So again, we're comparing two things. Relationship A says that you are defined by the equation y equals 9x. 9 is your constant rate of change. It's given to you. You don't have to do any calculating there. However, you do have to find the constant rate of change for relationship B. Remember that when we have a table, we can do that by just dividing. So you can do 34.5 divided by 3, which gives me 11.5. Let's check it in the next row. 57.5 divided by 5, again, is 11.5. Try it with the last one. Because it's consistently 11.5, that is your constant rate of change. So now you are asked to compare, all right, you've got 9 and you've got 11.5. Those are the two constant rate of change that you're comparing. It says how many units greater is the constant rate of change for B compared to A? What is 11.5 minus 9? It is 2.5. So it is 2.5 units greater. So a lot of us overthought that. You were doing division, multiplication. No, nope, you just had to subtract. That's it. Okay, so now let's talk about your assignment for today. It is on Schoology. It is an error analysis task for property 7.1 through 7.4. So let's take a look at that together. So notice that I'm on the correct assignment. That's step number one, um, 7.1 through 7.4. These are all short answer. There's only four questions and it's worth 48 points. So here's what it will look like for question one. Step one, you need to review the problem. The problem is always highlighted in yellow in the work. You need to either describe the error, explain how to solve correctly and provide the correct answer. And yes, you need all three components or you need to state that there is no error. Okay, so here's the problem. Here's my work. And then here's my answer. So if there is an error, which you could find out if you solve it yourself, um, you need to go through highlighted portion A here and make sure you hit all the components. I even have a rubric in here. Let me show you really quick. Um, I have a rubric to make sure that you hit every single component, okay? You will do that for all four questions, and I will tell you there's only one that does not have an error. So three out of the four have errors, one does not. And I think that that's it. Okay, you guys, good luck today on your final assignment. Take some time to yourself over spring break. Go outside. If you need anything, please message me. But please know how proud I am of you guys. You have just blown me away with how well you've worked, how well you've self-advocated. Um, I am very, very proud of you guys. So if I don't hear from you, have a wonderful spring break and enjoy. Um, I miss you guys so much. Hope to see you soon. All right, see ya.